If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in Freecode Camp's Build an Event Hub. It is their lab where they're going to give you some user stories and we're going to go ahead and complete it. There's some tests that will get ran to test us on what we have learned in the previous lessons from Freecode Camp. Now, if this is your first time joining, my name's Rob. I'm with Precode Camp. I'm a coding instructor where I help people become web developers and get you interested and help you along with your journey. As all these videos that we're making here for Free Code Camp, they are free. And something that you can do to help us out is hit that like button. It's free. It only takes a second to do. And that really helps that YouTube algorithm help other people like you find our video. All right, so let's see what we're going to be building here. It says, take a look at this example. And it looks like we have some H1, some H2s. We have an unordered list here and some anchor tags. Pretty simple stuff based upon what we've done before. So it may look like a lot and it typically is, but we're gonna go ahead and go through it. And luckily it does give us a lot of the stuff that we have here for boilerplate code. We have the head, we have the body, and then we have that final HTML tag down there. The way that FreeCodeCamp works with these types of lessons is they don't give you step-by-step -step guidance. However, they do give us user stories. And I typically start with the user stories at the very top, and we're just gonna work our way all the way down to the bottom here. And it looks like there's 10 user stories and a lot of tests that can be passed. Now, when you're going through this, you can test things as we're going along through it. For myself, what I've been doing in these videos is I've been just going through each user story, and then I'm going to test everything at the end. That's the way that I'm going to approach this, but it's really up to you on how you want to do it. User story number one, it says we should have a header element. So inside the body here, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and put the header in here. And that is going to satisfy user story number one. See, not so bad so far, right? Let's move on to the next user story. User story number two with the free code camp building uh, event hub. It says that inside the header element, we should have an H1 element that contains the text event hub and then a nav element. And I believe this workshop or this lab, we're really trying to focus on semantic tags. And after we conduct this H1 tag, it wants us to have a nav tag. Now, anytime we're putting these tags in here, like header or nav, really it's used to help organize your thought. And it has really no effect other than a few of the semantic tags really help the screen readers, those with disabilities, be able to decipher the web page. And then it said that we need to have a nav element here. And I know I need to go back into the H1 because it says that I need to put this exact text in here. Please keep in mind that every single thing that they give you in the gray, it is case sensitive. It's what it's looking for. And so I really want you guys to pay attention to that because casing can matter when it comes to these unit tests or these testing scenarios. When we come down here and run a test, right? It's looking for case sensitivity. So I believe that completes us for user story number two. Let's move on to the next user story. All right. Inside the nav element it says you should have an unordered list and two items in there containing links of the next page or sections of the page. The first item should be upcoming events. And then the second one should be past events. Now, in order for us to have an unordered list, that needs to be a UL element. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that one off. Now, with the UL elements, what goes inside are what we call list items. And so that is abbreviated with an, so I'm going to do opening and closing brackets on this. And says that we need two of them. We'll go ahead and do another L here as well as a closing one. It says for the first one, we should have the upcoming events. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to paste that in there for the second one. Okay. So let me grab the past events and put it there. So you can see that they are bulleted. And if we remember 
what our original one looked like. It said that these are hyperlinks. And so what I'm thinking here, just reading a little bit ahead, is that we're going to be applying an anchor tag to each one of these, and that's going to be the next user story. Let's go on to it. So step number four, it says that the link should be represented with an A element and the attribute that links to the corresponding section of the page. And so we have these hashtags that they are providing us and each one goes on them. How are you going to do this? At the beginning of the upcoming, we're going to do it an opening a tag, and then we want to close that a tag on the other side. And we want to do the same thing to each one of these. So it first goes the, then it goes the anchor tag, and then let's close it off here. Okay. Now the beginning anchor tag it needs to have an attribute called. So the first one is going to be like, this. I put a space, I put an equal sign, and then I put the quotes on there. And what goes inside here are the hashtags. So this one's upcoming events. And I know this may not look good. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this to the, maybe the next line. It doesn't look like it's going to work out too well here, but I'm limited on screen space. The next one that we need to do this to, I'm going to copy I'm going to copy this here, and then I'm going to paste this on the next line. So make sure I hit a space. Instead of upcoming events, I need this to be the past events. All right. I believe that is good. So when you're going through these things, the indentation might throw you off on this. I'm going to pause the video and see if I can clean this up to make it look a little better. All right. So that's cleaned up. Hopefully the indentations help you, and that should complete user story number Four. Okay, user story number five, it says that you should have a main element that contains different sections of the page. Where the main goes, it needs to be outside of the header for our page to get the check mark for us to complete this. But that, that's typically what you'd want to do when you're designing your HTML page. So I'm just going to do a main here and I'm going to add myself a couple spaces and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and close off the main right here. And that should satisfy the user story number five. So user story number six, it says inside the main element, we should have two section elements. And again, that's another semantic tag that we're going to be utilizing. And what we're talking about here is inside the main, we're going to go ahead and create a section. And then we're going to close off this tag. And then we're going to repeat this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then I'm going to paste. So there's our two sections that should complete our user story number six. User story number seven, it says the first section element should have an ID attribute of upcoming events. I'm assuming that each one of these sections here that we're building out, one, the link will go to this section down here, and then utilizing this link up here will move us to this section on here. So it's a real easy way for you to have different articles laid out on a page and you simply click on a link at the very top and it moves your browser scroll all the way to this section. So when we do this over here, the attribute, we want to set that ID and we want to set that equal to the coming events. So something to note here is that this has to match this exactly minus the hashtag. The hashtag is almost symbolic to an ID and the ID that it needs to go to is this one here. All right, so that should satisfy user story number seven. Okay, I think we're on user story number eight. It looks like it has a lot of bullet points, so let's take this one nice and slow. So in number eight, it says, in this section here, let's go ahead and have an H2 element with the text of upcoming events. So let's do that first. So H2. And I'm going to go ahead and close off the H2. And we want to type in here upcoming events. Perfect. Okay. Next, it says we need two article elements. Each article should represent an event and should have an H3 element in the event title. Really, step by step here, it says that we need to have two articles. So here's article one, here's article two. Again, we're not going to see anything until we put content in. So the very first article, it says that we need to have an H3 element. And that H3 element needs to be the title of the article. And then we're going to have a paragraph 
on here. And then it says that we can also add a date to the bottom if we like. I don't know, but we can go ahead and try this out. Let's go ahead and do another P tag on the article itself. Okay, so where are we going to get the information for this? Let's go ahead and go grab some information. But I feel like the two articles, they need the exact same thing. So I am going to set myself up for success here. And I'm going to grab the H3s and the other P tags. And I'm going to go ahead and paste them in here. So that way I have them. Where am I going to go get the reference? At the very top, we have the example that we can click on. And that's how we're going to build this stuff out. So the very first thing that they have on theirs is the AI and machine learning. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that one. And then I'm going to paste that as my H3. Perfect. And again, my indentations are throwing things off here. But hopefully we know that... We have an opening and a closing H3 if you followed along with my copying and pasting and building out the tags first rather than typing along. Next, I'm going to grab this for my paragraph tag, and that's going to be my very first one. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there, and then I'm going to grab the date that they have, and I'm going to put it in the final P tag. And it's starting to look exactly like how they have it on theirs. For the secondary article, again, I'm going to use their example. They have a web development bootcamp. So that's going to be my H3. I'm going to grab the sample paragraph that they have provided, and I'm going to put that in my next paragraph one. And then for the date, it said that we can put at the end, I'm going to grab that date that they provide us as an example and put it in there as well. So this is looking exactly like how they had theirs. This satisfies a user story number eight. So let's go ahead and move on to the next user story. All right, user story number nine tells us that in our second dairy section, Go ahead and give it the ID and set that equal to past events. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our final user story and see what it has for us. Okay. Move my picture out of the way for our, our user story number 10. It says inside the past events section that is right here. We want to go ahead and add two article elements. All right. So we're going to do an art and I'm going to copy this once I'm done with it. So that way we have the two articles. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the skeleton aspect of this. It says that we need to have an H3 element in here. So we're going to do H3, close it off. And then it says we need to have a paragraph tag on here. And then it does say that we could put a date at the bottom if we liked. I will go ahead and do that just for extra practice. Okay. And then it says we want to add an image to the bottom of this. And then it gives us two images that we can use down here for both of our articles. An image tag is a void element, meaning that we don't have to close it off, right? And so we can just do an a source. We want to set that equal. I'm going to put empty strings on there for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that off. So. That is going to be my skeleton outline for both articles. Let me grab it and let's go ahead and paste that in there also. Okay, so now that we have that, this should be super easy to go through and do. I'm going to grab this image URL and plop it in right there. I'm going to grab the other one and put it in the SRK. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab that information from the cybersecurity here. This is going to be our very first one, our very first H3 that we created right here. Paragraph tag. Let's take a look at what we should put for it. And let me go ahead and paste that in here. And then we have to go back for the date. Again, is all this stuff necessary? Probably not in order to pass the tests, but we're just going to keep on going because they did. This next one is the Blockchain Expo 2024. Let me go to the H3 and we can see that the blockchain is showing up. Let's grab this paragraph. And then the last thing is the date. And that goes in that final paragraph skeleton that we did. All right, perfect. I think we got every single thing on here. 
It did say that the alt image can be a description. And for the image, I did forget to put that on here, but we can just do image one and then we'll do another alt over here and we'll do image two. Okay, I believe that should get our test to work. Let's run the test and see what we forgot. Okay, so it says on here, the header element should have an H1 element with event hub. So maybe I did miss that. Yep, event hub. I copied the wrong thing. And so let me go ahead and fix that up at the top. I don't know where I got the wrong one, but let's go ahead and run these tests now. And we got all of these here, but this one. So it says on number 20, inside of the past events section, you should have an H2 element called past events. Did I forget that? I probably did. Let's fix that. So I'm in the second section here, and this is where I'd want to put it. And I'm going to go ahead and double check again. So it's above the article, and it's going to be the H2. And let's go ahead and close that off. Okay, running the tests again. There we go. Now we got it. So like I said, you can create the stuff, and then you can test as you go, or you can wait to the end, test, and then fix. Okay. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. If you stuck around this long, you saw that we made a few mistakes along the way, but we're able to correct them and fix them, okay? That's what those tests are there for. If it did come up with an error, you know how to read the error and you know how to fix it. Thank you so much for watching. And one of the best things that you can do here for us is make sure that you give us a thumbs up on the video. That really helps that algorithm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.